Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Twitter cohort meeting. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for, for joining us this afternoon, um, at least this afternoon here in North Dakota. Um, maybe morning for you or in the middle of the night if uh, you're somewhere else on the globe. Um, I'm Bob Burt, Web Technology Specialist at North Dakota State University and also the Engagement Coordinator, coordinator for the Network Literacy Community of Practice. And um, I've got some stuff I'll, I'll share with you today uh, regarding uh, Twitter and specifically Twitter chats. But um, I thought we'd start uh, today's meeting just kind of asking how is it going? Um, how's your Twitter experience been as we're getting close to the end of the cohort experience? And do you have any questions at all? And if you do, uh, go ahead and put those into the chat pod or uh, use your talk button and your microphone. And I see Donna's raised her hand. So Donna, if you have a microphone hooked up, you can click the talk button. Okay, Robert, I still am not quite clear when I'm retweeting someone and I modify it. And so an example was I went to retweet something this morning and when I wanted to add my comments, it made the original tweet, everything was too long. So if I take out part of what was the original tweet, is that considered modifying and then how do, what do I do? Great question, uh, Donna. Yes, um, if you change, in my view, and again, I always sort of preface this stuff as, you know, it's, it's sort of like social etiquette or real world etiquette, you know, everybody's got a little bit different way of doing things and interpreting things. But in my view, as soon as you uh, edit that tweet at, at all, even if it doesn't change the sense of it, um, you know, you just replace A-N-D with an ampersand or something to shorten it up, I consider that modifying it as soon as you do that. Um, and so when, whenever I do that, I, instead of having an R-T at the beginning, so if I would, instead of having R-T and then the username, I will change that to M-T to signify that this is a modified tweet. Um, and so that's the practice and th that uh, the guides in the Twitter cohort um, we sort of sort of agreed upon um, that that was the direction. And um, do you have any follow-up questions with that or does that make sense to you? Okay, so I'm checking out some things in the chat pod and for uh, those of our uh, viewers and listeners who are um, who are watching the recording, I'm gonna I'm gonna read some of these. So bear with me, those of you who are on live and can see it uh, as I'm seeing it. So Peggy's saying she's enjoying the class, a little a little stressful in the beginning, trying to juggle at work, but I've learned so much. Uh, feel a little bit more comfortable with it now. That's great. That's obviously the goal that we had was to increase your your comfort level with Twitter. And um, the struggling uh, with juggling work, um, that's always uh, something that we need to be, you know, it's difficult to do. And carving out actual time, it's something that we uh, really recommend whenever you're trying to uh, adopt a new communication technology or social network, is actually carving out some time. So even saying, you know, my first 10 minutes of the day or um, when I get up in the morning, I'm having coffee. This is when I'm going to dedicate some time to doing this. So you get in that in that habit. Um, so Kathy's having a hard time uh, finding the time to do the assignments. Do we put Twitter cohort at the beginning or the end? That's the hashtag Twitter cohort uh, of the message we are trying to tweet or retweet. And the, we've um, talked about this hashtag question a couple of times before. Um, and really, you can put your hashtag anywhere. Um, when so there, there's a couple examples specifically with the Twitter cohort. So um, one of the strategies in, in tweets and using hashtags is to use a hashtag to take the place of an actual word that you are going to type. Okay, and so that you get the benefit of a hashtag, but you're not taking up extra characters. The example that I always use for that is there's a hashtag for cooperative extension. 
Uh, it's C-O-O-P-E-X-T, so hash sign C-O-O-P-E-X-T. I will use that instead of typing out extension or cooperative extension in a tweet. Um, and so when you do that, you're putting that hashtag, you know, wherever that word or phrase would occur within your tweet for it to make sense. So let's use the example of the Twitter cohort hashtag. So I might put the Twitter cohort hashtag at the beginning of a tweet if I'm addressing the members of the Twitter cohort, like, hey, Twitter cohort, and then here's my message. Um, or I might use it at the beginning if I was going to send a tweet that said, Twitter cohort meeting starts at 12 p.m. Central Time, and then use the hashtag in, in, the, in place of the two words Twitter cohort. Um, and so in that case, you might put it at the beginning um, or in the middle. I put hashtags at the beginning or in the middle when I'm using them in that way, when I have them taking the place of words. If I'm attaching hashtags as just a way to track a conversation, like we would with the, the Twitter cohort, or as a way to sort of add a keyword, quote unquote, um, to uh, you know, to connect my tweet with a with a broader conversation, then I put it at the end as sort of an addendum. Does that help, Kathy? Does that make sense? Lynn's question about the microphone here in the Blackboard Collaborate classroom. The talk button is how you control that, Lynn. Click the talk button once to turn it on. Click it again to mute your microphone. <laughs> you can turn your mic on if you want, Kathy, but that's either way. Um, so Donna's question is, who sees tweets with hashtags? Everyone following me or only those who, who have that hashtag? So the question to that is uh, both or all of the above, OK? So when you add a hashtag to a tweet, you're doing nothing different in terms of who can see that tweet. Um, you, your people who are following you are going to see that tweet. But remember, if you have your Twitter profile public, which most people do, and we highly recommend it because to get the most out of Twitter. So if you have your, your Twitter profile public, um, then all your tweets are public. They're searchable. So the people who are following you will see that tweet uh, in their feed, whether the, whether you include a hashtag or not, um, but it will also show up in any streams or feeds that other people have set up around just that hashtag, even if they're not following you. Okay, so that's what we did. Like in Hootsuite, we set up a a stream for the hashtag Twitter cohort. Um, and by doing that, you'll see every tweet that has the Twitter cohort hashtag in it, regardless of whether you are following that person or not. Okay? Does that answer the question, Donna? Okay. So Peggy's asking, how long will we have access to Hootsuite after the class? You will have access to Hootsuite as long as you want to maintain your account. Um, there's, you sh you're all probably using a free account right now, I would assume. Um, and so we are not providing any special access to you or we don't have a deal with Hootsuite. It's just a tool that you're welcome to use um, and you can use for free. And so that seems to be working for folks. Let's see. Okay. Any other questions or comments? before we uh, jump into Bob talking at you and boring you to tears. Bob? Yeah. This is Donna again. I'm trying to get into a routine to make tweeting a part of my work world. And have you found that there's a particular time of day or certain days that seem to be the best, I mean, is it better to tweet in the morning, right after lunch, at the end of the work day, early in the week, late in the week? Well, I mean, my easy, that's a good question, by the way, Donna, thank you. Um, my sort of uh, 
you know, I'm not trying to evade your question, but um, one way to answer that is it depends on the network. Um, obviously, if you're trying to connect with people around a TV program, you know, then that's going to probably be on in the evening. But in general, I will say that if you're trying to connect with people about workplace related things or about not just inside your organization, but, you know, professional development, things that relate to your work, then um, business hours tend to be most active in my experience. Um, and so, uh, you know, most people stay, uh, if they're in the same time zone as you or similar time zone as you, flow the way your day does. So, uh, you know, you're getting the mor get up in the morning, get to work, and you're uh, in your email, um, you know, taking care of housekeeping kind of stuff. So 8 a.m. my time, you know, 7 to 8 a.m. my time tends to be a pretty active time uh, among the people in my stream. Um, same thing with the noon hour, early afternoon. You know, you have that break. Um, you have a chance to kind of slow down your kind of scheduled lunch break. And uh, that might be a time that people jump on Twitter uh, as well. Um, Marissa is, I think, in the process of setting up her microphone, but I was going to see if she uh, had anything to add to that, and she can probably do that in the chat. But yeah, if you're trying to use it professionally, I would say, you know, business hours are best. I always tell people, you know, tweet, you know, when it occurs to you. Don't worry about, oh, I don't want to send this at 11 p.m. because, you know, no one's going to see it. Somebody will see it. Um, and some people will see it. Uh, some people might see it when they search for certain content. Um, but the best time to tweet is when it when you're thinking of it. Um, I really have a hard time with, uh, you know, if I'm like, oh, hey, I should tweet that, but I, I don't have time right now or something, then I never tweet it. Um, although I should mention that, you know, one strategy for for handling that is to use scheduling, and you can do scheduling in Hootsuite. And we've we've mentioned another tool called Buffer, I think, in some of the classes that is a good tool to schedule tweets to go out in the future, so that maybe they do hit at a more busy time. So Paul is asking. Let's see, I catch up on a couple of things here. Um, Paula is saying, I think I'm tweeting and not many people will see it, how to develop a following. So it takes time to grow a network. Um, part of the Twitter cohort was to sort of help you guys build a network. Um, because we had so many members, uh, you know, some of you might just be subscribing to the Twitter cohort list and not having actually followed people. But that would be one way to, if, you, if there's many of you who might be concerned about the same thing about developing a following, um, that would be one step that you might want to take is to actually go into that list and follow your fellow cohort members um, or follow people who are using the Twitter uh, cohort hashtag because, um, you know, those connections spawn other connections. Um, some of the other uh, strategies for developing a following is to go ahead and follow some people. So a lot of times when you follow people, they will follow you back if you are, if they have some, uh, you know, some inkling that you are uh, someone that they want to hear from if you're in the same industry as them or uh, if they're interested in your tweets. So a lot of times just going out and, and searching out people to follow will get people to follow you back. Um, the other thing that you can do is is look for those hashtags. We're going to talk about Twitter chats a little bit here today. Um, and if, if there's a hashtag, uh, either whether it's connected with a Twitter chat or it's just something that's used on, on Twitter uh, that uh, relates to a subject that you're interested in or your area of expertise, um, then go ahead and use that hashtag. And that'll uh, expose your information uh, to uh, other people who are following that hashtag who might not even know that you exist. So that's another way to, to develop a following. The, the last thing I'll say on that, and um, our guides can jump in and, and share their thoughts as well, is tweet. If you want people to follow you, tweet. Tweet consistently uh, and tweet things that are of value. Um, and of course, that's subjective of value. It depends on who you're trying to reach. But if you have an idea of who you'd like 
to be connected with on Twitter, um, then tweet the kinds of things that you think that they will find valuable um, and tweet kind of consistently and, and people will will find you. Let's see. So thanks, Marissa. Marissa's added some comments in here, and I will go ahead and read them for the recording. Uh, but this really depends on your audience. Uh, using your analytics will help you determine when people are engaging with your posts. And that's in, in response to the question about when are people active on Twitter. And, and yeah, that's exactly, I agree with that 100%. Um, let's see. And Sue, Bob, will you continue participating in NetLit Twitter cohort chats after this? Is there a hashtag? for PLNs or personal learning networks. Netlit hashtag, yes. Um, not just me, but uh, a lot of the Network Literacy Community of Practice members will uh, use that and track that. Um, and uh, that goes with Twitter cohort as well. Um, I think we have, a, we have enough people in our cohort this time that will uh, continue to use. Feel free for you, first of all, if you want to continue to use that hashtag, uh, where you feel appropriate, that's absolutely fine. I'll continue to follow it as well. So if you have questions and you hashtag them Twitter cohort, I'd be happy to, uh, I'll be following those and hopefully I can catch those and I'm sure some of our other guides will continue to follow that Twitter cohort as well. We will probably, and I say probably because I haven't cleared this or even talked to, about it with our, our guides, we will probably repeat this uh, experience uh, sometime in the near future, maybe in the spring. And so uh, if you continue to follow the Twitter cohort hashtag, you might, you might see some extra traffic when we launch the, the next educational experience with, with a new group of Twitter cohort members. Okay. And uh, Marissa adds to uh, my comments about how to gain a following on Twitter. Uh, and listen, and that's in, that's in caps with an exclamation point for you, you folks who are listening to the recording. Um, that's how you learn what your followers are interested in, is by listening to them. Great advice, Marissa, thank you. Okay, well if you, if you guys still have questions, uh, please go ahead and, and post them to the chat pod or, or feel free to interrupt me uh, at any time with your microphone as well. A few things that I just want to uh, share with you uh, in today's meeting. I'll start with the list. Uh, here is the list again. Uh, just one more time. If you've been on previous meetings, you've seen this a few times. Uh, I apologize, but I just want to make sure everybody who wants to be on the Twitter cohort list has a chance to get on there. If you haven't looked at that list or subscribed to it or used it to follow people, uh, you can see the URL right there. Um, and feel free to just go to that web address and you'll be able to see everybody on the list. If you're not on the list and you want to be, um, put your Twitter account in the chat now um, or email it to me and you guys should all have your, my email address since I keep sending you um, all these emails about upcoming meeting times and activities for the week and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's the first order of business. Um, next, I want to talk about Twitter chats a little bit. And this is going to be a real uh, high-level overview. One of the things that we want you to, to get some experience with is our Twitter chats or tweet chats, sometimes we call them. Um, Marissa's uh, prepared a really good video that's linked from the syllabus uh, on this as well uh, to uh, for you to uh, get familiar with Twitter chats. But I'm just going to cover a few uh, high points uh, in terms of Twitter chats on a couple of different tools that you can use. Uh, you can, uh, let me start with what a Twitter chat is um, in just a second, but I do want to get Marissa's comment in here because thank you, Marissa, I didn't address the personal learning network hashtag question. Um, and what Marissa is saying is you can go to searchhash.com and search for, you know, hashtag PLN to find conversations that are going on about that. I also mentioned that um, there is a learning experience that's going on right now that about personal learning networks. It's called Exploring Personal Learning Networks, and they are using the hashtag, and I'm posting it to the chat here, the hashtag XPLR for explore, uh, so XPLRPLN. 
Um, so you may want to look at that hashtag Sue. Um, I know Steve Judd, one of our gu guides, is involved in that learning experience, and uh, it's been pretty good content from what I could see. So the idea of Twitter chats is we've talked about using hashtags and how you can use hashtags to track a conversation, like our Twitter cohort hashtag, um, to bring groups of tweets together. Um, but we're doing that over a long period of time. And another way to use hashtags is to use that hashtag to group tweets into a conversation over a much shorter period of time, sometimes a scheduled period of time. And that's what we're talking about when we talk about Twitter chats. These are scheduled conversations centered around a particular hashtag uh, to discuss some issue. And they take place you know, over an hour or an hour and a half um, on a particular day at a particular time. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about Twitter chats. And I think it'd be an, it's an interesting way to use Twitter. And I think it's, uh, it would be, it'll be an interesting experience for you to not necessarily you know, fully participate if you don't want to, but to uh, actually you know, view, at least uh, lurk in a Twitter chat um, to kind of get the idea of, of how people are using them. Um, there's a couple tools that you can use. Uh, of course, you could use Hootsuite if you want to just by following a particular hashtag during that Twitter chat. One of the problems with Hootsuite in that is that uh, Hootsuite doesn't um, always update those streams as frequently as you might want, especially when you're talking about a real-time conversation, right? So if we're having a Twitter chat, um, you know, we want to see everybody's tweets really quickly. And Hootsuite isn't always the best um, uh, the best place for that. You could also do that in Twitter.com, same way, just you know, d use the search bar and search for the hashtag for that Twitter chat, and you could see the tweets come in. Um, but it, it um, might be a little bit difficult for you to track that, to kind of keep track of the conversation. Um, and then every time that you contribute to the conversation, you have to remember to type in the hashtag uh, for that. Um, Marissa's working on an ebook about uh, Twitter chats, uh, designing and implementing Twitter chats. Um, but you can also search for pretty much anything you want to know online. There are a ton of excellent resources out there. And that's true. We've got a couple of things linked uh, on the syllabus about Twitter chats. Um, but a couple of the tools that you might want to think about using if you do want to participate in a Twitter chat, um, and there's, there's a few of them out there. But one is Tweet Chat. Let me pull that up here. So this is Tweet Chat. It's just www.tweetchat.com. Um, and so it's a place where you can follow a particular uh, hashtag, whether it's a true Twitter chat or not, you know, whether it's taking place. You, know, you can follow the Twitter cohort hashtag here or the Netlit hashtag or the co-op EXT hashtag here. You can follow any hashtag. Um, but it's really, this tool is really built for those real-time conversations. And so you can see I've highlighted a couple of places there where you could enter a hashtag to follow um, and uh, take a look at how that looks in tweet chat. There's also a way for you to sign in. So if you look in the upper right-hand corner of the slide, I've got the sign in button uh, highlighted there. Um, and you, the reason you might want to sign in, if you just want to follow a conversation and not participate in, in it at all, um, you can just put a hashtag in and look at the stream for that hashtag. But it, you'd want to sign in if you want to participate, because you could post tweets to that conversation right here from Tweet Chat. You wouldn't have to go back to Hootsuite or go back to Twitter.com. Uh, you could post right from inside of Tweet Chat. So, if you click that sign in button, it's basically going to ask you to sign in using Twitter. Um, and when you do that, Twitter is going to ask you to authorize Tweet Chat as an app. Okay? Some of you might not be familiar with this idea of apps that can run on different uh, platforms, um, sort of like games in Facebook, right? The, the game itself, 
Farmville or whatever, or Candy Crush or whatever, is an app that's running on the Facebook platform so that it, it can connect with your Facebook profile and your posts and your friends and all of that kind of stuff. This is a similar idea. Tweet Chat is an app that sort of runs on the Twitter platform. It uses your, it can use your profile information, uh, your list of followers, list of the people that you're following, and those, and your tweets, um, you know, in order to give you this Tweet Chat experience. Uh, Marissa is mentioning, depending on the number of people joining in the tweet chat, you may need to use multiple applications. It's not unusual for me to have the hashtag stream running in multiple locations, as sometimes the applications get overwhelmed and the tweets will lag. Yeah, and so in that case, you could jump back and forth between a couple of different tools. Tweet chat and TWBs are the ones that we're going to look at uh, today. So there's that big authorize app button, and I've highlighted there you know, what the application is going to be able to do. It's going to be able to read tweets from your timeline. It's going to be able to see who you follow and follow new people. Um, it's going to be able to update your profile um, and post tweets for you. In the case of Tweet Chat, you know, it won't do any of that stuff without you initiating it. It's not going to auto-follow people. It's not going to auto-tweet to your, to your timeline um, or post tweets for you without you uh, giving it you know, actually um, uh, initiating that uh, process. But that's the kind of stuff that it needs, needs your authorization to access from Twitter. So once you give, uh, once you authorize the app and give it access, um, this is, and now I've, I've typed in up in this, uh, up in the box in the upper left, uh, the netlet hashtag. And what, I'm, what you're seeing a picture of here is a stream of all the tweets out there uh, that have the netlet hashtag. So this would be the exact same list or very similar anyway, depending on how frequently it was updated. If you put the netlet hashtag in Twitter search or if you put it in a stream in uh, Hootsuite, you'd see these exact same tweets because they're all coming from the same place. They're coming from Twitter, the Twitter database. Um, it's just different applications searching for those. And so you can see uh, some tweets here from Sarah and Karen and Ann Adrian and, and John Dorner. Um, because they use the netlet hashtag, those uh, show up in the stream. So at the first, you know, my first step can be I'm just going to follow this just like I would a stream in Hootsuite. I'm going to read uh, the tweets that are happening in this uh, real-time conversation. Now I've zoomed in here a little bit to show you that you can also um, tweet from inside Tweet Chat so that you can not just follow the conversation but participate in it. And so you've got a box up there just like you would have in Hootsuite or in Twitter where you would type your message. You've got a place to shorten a URL if you want to attach a URL and you want to be able to shorten it. Um, I'll show you about some of these other buttons. but the one I want to point out to is uh, to the right of the shortened URL area there, you'll see a checkbox for add hashtag. That's one of the nice things about these tools is that they will auto add the hashtag for you um, for whatever conversation you're, you're participating in. And when you're participating in a, in a real time conversation, that time saver really is a time saver. You're trying to respond. It's, it's like instant messaging or something. And so if you're in a conversation, but every time that you send a message, you've got to remember, oh, I got to put the hashtag on uh, to, to participate in the conversation. Um, it's annoying, I think. <laughs> and it's difficult to remember sometimes. And if you forget, you're not in the conversation name anymore, that your tweet will be posted and the people who follow you will see that tweet, but the people who are just following the conversation won't see the tweet because you didn't include the hashtag. Okay? So in Tweet Chat, that, uh, that ability for the tool to actually add the hashtag at the end of each tweet that you send through there uh, is a great feature. Let's see here. Uh, Marissa's got another comment here I want to read for the record. Uh, Tweet Chat is also the easiest one if you're on a mobile device. It doesn't use much in the way of resources. 
um, and it runs well on both Android and iOS devices in a web browser if you are connecting on the go. Thanks. Great advice uh, from Marissa there. So let me, uh, let me go to the next slide here and show you a couple other things here. So you can see I typed in that message um, up in the uh, tweet into Netlit box up there. I didn't add the hashtag, but when I tweeted it, uh, tweet chat added the, the Netlit hashtag for me so that my tweet would be part of that conversation. So all the other buttons. <laughs> Sorry for this busy, busy slide, but um, I mentioned the add hashtag. That's that's checked by default. You could uncheck it if you want to add your hashtag yourself, but um, I'm not sure why you would want to do that because it really is a big uh, time saver. There's a clear button. So if you want to just clear, if you've read everything that's on your screen right then, you just want to clear that out. You can you can clear the tweets out of your stream. Um, you can pause the stream. This is one of the things that when you get into a tweet chat, if it's an active tweet chat, or twi I'm going to say Twitter chat, sorry, so we don't confuse the act of chatting via Twitter with this tool that's called tweet chat. So when you get into a Twitter chat, um, you're going to, if it's an active one, you're going to probably be close to overwhelmed. I mean, I know I was the first time that I, I participated in one because, uh, you know, once you get, you know, 20, 30, 40 people all discussing, or more, much, much more, uh, all discussing the same issue or answering the same question, those tweets are going to come really fast. So sometimes it helps to just be able to pause that, that stream um, so that you can, you know, read what you're trying to read, respond to what, what you're trying to respond to um, without it moving down, you know, because every time a new, a new tweet comes at the top, it's going to push everything else down. Um, highlighting, I haven't used the highlighting much, but what, it, what you can do is highlight tweets from selected users. So those will be uh, highlighted in your stream. So if there's certain people in a big conversation that you want to make sure you see their tweets, uh, you could put their usernames in when you click that highlight button. It asks you to, um, it asks you to uh, uh, put in usernames for the, the users you want to highlight, and you can do that. Um, you can block selected users. Now, my understanding is, and, and Marissa uh, uses tweet chat a little bit more than I do, so Marissa, jump in if I get this wrong. I think you're, what you're doing there is you're blocking uh, certain users from the stream, which I don't think should be confused with uh, you know, actually blocking a user from following you on Twitter. That's two different things. Here you'd put some you can put some usernames in. If there's certain users in the chat that are, you know, you just don't want to see their tweets for whatever reason, maybe they're off topic or, or you want to focus on a, a smaller group or something like that, uh, you could block some of those people. Uh, the retweets button, the gray one there, show hide retweets, it's just a matter of do you want to see retweets or not. So a lot of times in a Twitter chat, um, because there's not necessarily a like button <laughs> um, like there is in Facebook, uh, people will click that retweet button uh, just as a as a way of sort of you know saying I agree. Um, I don't think that's that's super good etiquette during a Twitter chat because obviously you're gumming up the stream uh, for the people who are following the conversation. Um, I don't need to see that tweet again. Um, sometimes that happens unintentionally. Sometimes it might be your follower who uh, is not following the conversation but just sees you sent this tweet and they're retweeting it. Um, so showing and hiding retweets can really help you uh, sort of clean up your stream a little bit if you hide those retweets. Um, but if you really want to see them, you can, you can add that. And then the last thing there, the share room, is uh, will actually generate a tweet that you can use to invite other people into the into the conversation. Um, so you click that, it'll it'll put a, a Twitter message up into that tweet box up there, and you send that out, and then uh, that'll be an invitation to all of your followers to join you in that conversation. A um, couple things I want to get to from the chat. Uh, from Marissa. Uh, she says, downside of pausing is that you can easily get very behind depending on how many people are chatting. Definitely. 
Um, and sometimes people retweet to simply share what is being said to their followers also, though, yeah. Other times people respond to something being said as an RT. So it's up to you uh, whether you can, you can turn that on and off and kind of see how that affects uh, the stream. It really depends on how people are using that retweet button and, um, and how busy your chat is. Any questions you guys have about tweet chat or about Twitter chats in general? I kind of jumped into that relatively quickly. I know it can be a little bit confusing, so uh, please go ahead and ask your question with your microphone or, or add it to the chat pod if you have a question. couple other things that you might want to check out on TweetChat. One is that there is a, they do have a calendar out there. There's a few Twitter chat uh, calendars that are available. Um, a while back, I know somebody started a, an open uh, Google Docs spreadsheet that had a bunch of uh, Twitter chats in there with when they take place and what the, what the topic was. This is the same idea. Um, is uh, on Tweet Chat. You can t check out a calendar and see what what Twitter chats are coming up that you might want to uh, take part in. Um, if you have your own Twitter chat, you could you could post that uh, to this calendar as well. So just look for the calendar link on Tweet Chat to uh, check out some conversations. Um, and this is again sort of like searching for a hashtag or anything like that. Um, you know, this is another place where you can go to. Try and see what's going on. See if there's a community uh, around a particular topic area that you're interested in or that you are professionally engaged in and connect with people who, who share your interests. Um, let's see. Uh, back to the retweets issue, another comment from Marissa. RTs for people trying to extend their reach are very important for building awareness as well. I agree. Um, since the people in the chat already know the chat is taking place, an RT can pull others in who were not aware of the conversation was taking place. Good point. I shouldn't have been so hard on people retweeting in the conversation. Um, so there's the uh, tweet chat calendar. You can check that out. So here's the other tool that Marissa had mentioned in the chat, and that's tw um, Twubs, excuse me, uh, at twubs.com. Uh, this is going to be pretty similar to what you would experience uh, in Tweet Chat. Um, one of the differences is there you can register your hashtag um, and kind of create this community around that particular hashtag. Um, and we've we've done that with a few different things that some of us in the network literacy community of practice have been involved in um, around conference hashtags or around particular uh, hashtags that we're using to kind of create this little uh, little community uh, or tribe or something around uh, a particular hashtag. So you can register a hashtag there. And this is just twubs.com um, up in the top right corner. Very similar to when we looked at TweetDeck, you've got to log in or sign up. Uh, area up there. So one of the things that you will need to do, like we did in Tweet uh, Chat, is to give Twubs access to your account to authorize that. Again, for the same reasons you would need that with Tweet Chat, um, so that it can, you know, post tweets for you and and connect you, uh, let you follow and uh, people from inside the app without going to Hootsuite, without going to Twitter.com. Um, to be able to do that stuff from TWUBS. Okay. Uh, yeah, a comment from uh, Marissa. Keep in mind that registering your hashtag does not mean you are the only one allowed to use it. Since there's no way to place a hashtag, it just offers some perks uh, for you as the user of that particular hashtag. Yep. Good, good point and good reminder. You're not registering it like you're registering a domain name. Uh, it's you know just a way of uh, making record of it within TWUBS. So here's the same netlet hashtag uh, stream or search that I showed you in Tweet Chat. Uh, this is what it looks like uh, in TWUBS. And so there's a couple things that are a little bit different. Um, there's a few more graphics and things here. 
Um, one of the things is the feed speed. So um, you can set that uh, so that, again, it's sort of like the pause button was in tweet chat. Uh, controlling that speed can sort of help you keep up um, with that sort of overwhelming speed that uh, tweets can come in uh, during real time uh, Twitter chats. Same capability uh, in terms of it will add the hashtag for you. So if you type your Twitter message in here where it says tweet to hashtag netlit as ndbob, um, you type that in there, it will add that hashtag uh, to your tweet. Uh, it does have a pause button here. Um, you can see over on the right hand side, uh, a little bit more graphic in nature, you can see who's contributing uh, to the conversation. And it's an easy way to kind of get access uh, to their accounts by clicking on those pictures. Of course, you could also uh, click on their username um, in the feed or the stream as well. All right. Read Marissa's comment, because I'm going to mute my microphone and cough here for a second. There we go. So for folks on the recording, um, Marissa saying, as the owner of the hashtag, if you register that in clubs, if you're displaying the stream as in an on as on a screen during a conference event, so like you're projecting it up on a screen during a presentation, you can choose which tweets are posted to that stream. Oh, so you've got some control over that. That's that's kind of cool. So if someone is posting something that isn't correct, you can change it before it goes out to the public. Well, that's that's a cool feature of uh, TWUBS. OK, let me see here. Shouldn't have too many things left. So a couple other things about TWUBS. There is a directory of hashtags, of those hashtags that have been registered. Um, and you can search through those alphabetically uh, or by category. Um, I did a screen capture looking at the category that's uh, called popular, or that's called Twitter chat. and so some of the popular Twitter chat hashtags uh, showed up there. You can just see them at the very bottom of uh, the feet of the uh, screen capture there. And then they also, uh, up at the top, uh, next to that directory button, have a chats button. So uh, that includes a schedule of chats that have been scheduled inside of TWUBS so that uh, it's another place for you to find chats um, that might be happening uh, and check them out and engage in them. Questions about TWUBS or Tweet Chat or Twitter chats in general? OK, post them to the chat pod or, or use your microphone if you do have questions. Uh, it's Tuesday, um, and so if you're not going to be on the catch-up session tonight for Twitter cohort, um, then you might want to check out Ag Chat. Um, that's Tuesday nights. I think it's 7 to 9 Central, if my memory serves correctly. Um, it's hashtag Ag Chat, A-G-C-H-A-T. Um, and that's that was the first Twitter chat that I participated in going on, uh, I don't know, four years ago or so. Um, and it's a pretty active one. It's pretty well organized. Um, so what AgChat does is they have a moderator who uh, posts questions. Um, and then people answer those questions uh, using you know Q1, Q2, Q3, so that it's clear what question they're at. Uh, answering. Um, it's a pretty well organized Twitter chat. Uh, some of the Twitter chats uh, aren't, don't have a moderator or aren't quite uh, so uh, deliberate and organized and are just sort of a free-for-all, which can be great too. You can get lots of great ideas that way. Um, but egg chat is a, is a pretty, uh, uh, pretty organized one. So um, yeah, that really helps. Having a moderator really helps you be able to follow that. Um, let's see, waiting to see if there's any questions. So we'll talk about the assignments for uh, this week. 
Uh, and Paul is saying, oh, maybe that's what the numbered questions in hashtag garden chat were. Yep, that's probably the what they're doing there is trying to moderate that stuff. So one of your assignments for this week is to participate in a uh, in a Twitter chat. Um, you, know, you don't have to be super active. You just want to get in there and see what's going on. Um, feel free to do that, but we we do want you to get you, get that experience um, so you can start to get comfortable in that environment. Um, Marissa is saying you can use Storify to make sense of the Twitter chat after it's over as well by pulling the tweets you want to save into Storify. It helps you make sense of the conversation after uh, the tweet uh, chat if you're feeling uh, overwhelmed during it. And Storify is a great curation tool. Um, we're using it to uh, keep track of this uh, learning experience, the Twitter cohort learning experience. Um, and yeah, it's a good tool for, for um, making sense of things. Um, if any of you saw some of the uh, tweets about uh, the information that Harold Jarkey is sharing about personal knowledge man management, you know, Harold talks about seek, sense, and share, uh, seeking out information, making sense of it to yourself, and then sharing it back with the rest of the community. Um, that sense making is uh, something that Storify is really good for. Uh, Austin said he participated and co-hosted, good, in a Food Friday uh, Twitter chat. Uh, a little crazy at first, but all hosts were on the phone with each other during the chat, and between the three of us, we were able to keep track of everything. Did notice a little bit of a lag on Hootsuite, though. Yeah, uh, Hootsuite is going to lag for you. Uh, I would, Austin, I would give Tweet Chat a try. But I'm glad you had a chance to get that experience and actually to run it a little bit uh, as a co-host as well. Great. Okay. So um, retweets, uh, we, what, that was one of the things that we asked you to do this week was to reshare uh, some tweets using the different reshare uh, methods. And we've had some questions about that um, uh, as earlier in the meeting. Uh, happy to take more questions if you have questions about that. I just did want to point out a couple of the a few of the tweets that we did see come through using the Twitter cohort hashtag. Here's an example of that quote tweet. Uh, so it you know, was, just has the quotation marks around it. No RT, uh, no new style retweet. Um, it's just got that uh, those quotation marks around it to show that this came from somebody else. And then Aaron added the uh, Twitter cohort uh, hashtag to the end of that as well to make sure that all of us who are following that would see uh, her quoted tweet. Here's an old uh, style retweet, what we've been calling the old style retweet. RT at the beginning, followed by the username. So it was Denise who originally posted this, and then UNL Crop Watch is retweeting it in the old style using the RT, followed by the username, and then the direct quote of that tweet. Okay. And uh, whoops, so went. Here we go. And here is why did I pull that one up? Okay, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, here's a okay, this is why I pulled that one up. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so some applications, Karen's asking, how do you do the quoted tweets? Some applications um, will have that uh, option of just quote tweet um, without uh, editing it or doing the new style retweet. Um, you can also do it just by adding quotation marks yourself. Yeah, Marissa's typing that as I say it. I pulled this one up from Donna just because um, it's, it's got the quotation marks around it, and so she's adding her comment which is yes down there. Um, so the quotation marks are one way that you can separate your comments from what you're directly quoting from another tweet. Okay. And then here's that modified tweet we talked about earlier uh, in the session. Um, if Sue had just retweeted this, it would have been too long, too many characters by the time she added the Twitter cohort hashtag. And so she modified it a bit. And when she modified it, she uses the MT instead of RT to show that, yes, I did make changes in that, OK? All right, and so this is one last tweet that I wanted to share from this week that Aaron sent. 
Um, and I just thought it was a great suggestion. Uh, she shared uh, an article about why cruise ships are my favorite remote, remote work location and suggested that we have a Twitter cohort meetup. So I hope you guys are all up for that. Um, anybody want to volunteer to, to plan the funding uh, for that, uh, let me know. But I, I'd love to meet you guys somewhere tropical on a cruise ship, provided that we, you know, it's stay sanitary and not on fire and all the other stuff that's been happening with cruise ships lately. Um, all right, so, and Paul is saying, I used an MT on Master Gardener feed and got the thanks from an extension person who tweeted it. Okay, good. All right, yeah. Uh, those are good requirements. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fund your your cruise or uh, plan it. But if someone wants to volunteer, we are I'll I'll be there. So Twitter cohort week four activities as we wrap up here. Um, Marissa's video on understanding tweet chats in ten steps. Please take a look at that. Very good resource uh, for you. Um, participate in at least one live Twitter chat. Um, there's a couple links there for a directory of Twitter chats, uh, and there's we showed you a couple other places to find Twitter chats, the calendar on tweet chat, uh, and the Twitter chats list on TWUBS. If you can just find one and just you know check it out, lurk in it, see how it works, it would be really, uh, I think it'd give you a, a leg up on doing that in the future, whether you organize your own Twitter chat or, or participate, participate more actively in one in the future. Um, I think it'll be a good experience for you. Keep watching the Twitter cohort hashtag this week uh, and participate in the class conversations, answer questions, pose questions, uh, all of that kind of stuff. We do have meetings scheduled for next Monday uh, at, at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern and again at 9 p.m. Eastern. And that's going to be our wrap-up meeting. Um, and we just love to hear your thoughts about the overall experience how you plan to use Twitter, um, things you think we could improve in the Twitter cohort learning experience, uh, things you liked and didn't like. Um, we'll be sending out an online survey as well, but uh, it's always great to sort of discuss those things. So I will send out uh, an email about those opportunities to share uh, your thoughts about the experience uh, next Monday. I'll send out the emails this week, but that's when it'll take place next Monday. Okay. So, questions. Yeah, bring your voices and super fast typing skills. We'd love to know what you thought about the experience. Okay, um, catch up session tonight at nine. If you wanna go through any of this again or if you think of questions or um, you wanna ask some more questions uh, later tonight, please join us for that. Always welcome to post your questions to Twitter using the Twitter cohort hashtag. Our guides are, are out there waiting. And um, if you want to make sure that you get the attention of a guide, uh, drop their username into your tweet. Um, maybe drop one or two usernames into a tweet if you really want to get someone's attention and so you can see those as well. Um, Victor Viegas from Oregon asked me to add the OSU EXT tech uh, hashtag, or excuse me, username to this list. And so I've done that as well. So there's an extra one on there from last time. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? Okay, you're welcome, Lynn, and you're welcome, Sue. Happy to do it. I'm going to stop the recording, but I'll, I'll be online here for a little while if you guys want to uh, ask any other questions. Uh, thanks for your attention this afternoon. I'll see you on Twitter.